Hi guys! Welcome to Healing Love and Relationships with your girl L. Janelle. And I have a guest speaker today. Her name is Coach B.B. Brown, one of my good friends that I've known for quite some time now. Hi Coach B.B., how are you? I'm good. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm so glad to have you on our podcast today. I'm so thankful. It's been a long time coming, but we're ready now, aren't we? Absolutely. Yes, we are. Ready to get this thing rolling. Amen to that. So we're going to talk about the trials and the triumphs of a loving wife. And Coach BB has been married for over 10 years. Yes, ma'am. Oh, and she has a loving husband and three beautiful children. Beautiful, beautiful children. Oh, my gosh. I'm so happy for you. So, Coach Bebe, tell us a little bit about yourself. So, um, I'm originally from Panama. I have been coaching for about 15 years, and I just received my license, but um, when it's your purpose and it's your calling, uh, it really doesn't matter. God calls you to it, then you just do it, pretty much is my motto. So um, I'm an ex-athlete. I used to run track and play soccer all the way up to my collegiate years. So I have been and had a very cultured and diverse life. My dad was definitely in the military, so I grew up everywhere. And um, I, I really just uh, thank God for the opportunity to have been able to experience more than just my backyard growing up. Oh, wow. Tell us about your journey to marriage. Um, so my journey to marriage just came when, um, it kind of just came out of the blue because I always said I didn't want to be married. I always said uh, I didn't want kids for whatever reason, who knows. And um, God just started working on my heart. I started ministering to people, not knowing I was ministering because I was young in the Lord. And I just started getting prophetic words that you will be married. And it kind of resonated with my spirit that my soul was meant to be married. And I was just like, okay. So once I embraced that marriage was in my future, then he started preparing me. He started prepping me. He started um taking me down roads that usually a wife would travel. I did fasting. I did urgently fasting at a time for my husband because I had no one. I wasn't dating anyone. So literally it was my husband. I would fast for him. I would pray for him. Um, I did things in the spirit first for him. So my preparation was a little different. Um, when I tell people, they're just like, wow, those are things that you do when you're married. Uh, how do you just do it when you're not? So when I coach my clients now, I coach them in the journey before and during because before is key. It's very key. You have to know where you're going to understand where you're at. So all those seeds that I threw and planted and cultivated and watered are definitely manifesting in my marriage now. And I can call them back. So I have things to call back and call forward because I've planted enough. So my journey, um, and it was only about a three-year journey. It wasn't that long. God definitely had some expeditedness in my future. So my journey didn't take as long as I know a lot of people um, have been waiting. So, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. That's really amazing. You start before you get married. No, you know what? People don't really think about that. We are not trained to do that. We're just trained to, if you see somebody, you like them and you tell them, you start dating them. But how, how do you, I want to go back to something. You said you were, you, it started in the spirit. How do you start doing things like that in the spirit for marriage? Um, like I said, fasting, um, writing down, many women write their list, and their list is um, not stomping on anybody's list, but most of the women that I coach that come to me, their list is not what God wants. It's not, it's what flesh wants. It's a fleshly list, and it's okay if you know that you're, and if you're open to having a real list. So the list should look more like he's a man of integrity, he's a man of the God's own heart, where the list that I get people see is he's fixed 
too, and he's gorgeous, and he's loving, and we can communicate how, what, where, how does he love you, how does he teach you, how does he um, take care of you, how do you guys communicate, we effectively communicate, those are spiritual things that you have to pray on um, before he gets there, so that when he gets there, you can now call those things back, so that's just one example of spiritually, um, doing things first because everything happens in the spirit first then we manifest it we pull it into the natural so i always coach my ladies and tell them what you are experiencing in your marriage right now is a direct effect of the lack of prayer the lack of spiritual discipline is what you're living in right now with your relationship oh wow wow that is amazing Wow. Well, I, I need. I guess I better get to praying, right? This. <laughs> I really gotta get to to praying because I definitely don't want that kind of lack in my marriage. You know, when I do get married. Oh wow, this is great information, you guys. I hope you're jotting things down. I hope you're listening with a listening ear because this is vital when it comes to marriage, when it comes to relationship. How do you, Coach BB, how do you develop that type of relationship um, uh, 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 in the spirit as a, as a wife? Uh, how, do you, how do you do those things? Where did you start? How did, how did God lead you to do those things? Um, first, it's the right relationship with God. It's a relationship with God, not church not your mother's relationship, not your girlfriend's relationship. It's your personal relationship with God and extreme obedience. And that's two things that is taboo in the church. And it's two things that the majority of us don't have. Like currently right now, in this season of my life with my marriage and transition and new territory being open, I have been fasting every morning and praying, more so praying. It's not really even a fast to me. It's become a lifestyle. I wake up every morning at 4.50 and pray for about 30 minutes. And it's been since January 1. People look at me and just like, oh, my God, this is insane. Like, are you serious? I'm like, yep. 30 minutes, give or take. It it can run higher, long, longer, or shorter, just being led by the Spirit. Um, And that's the key. You have to be led by the Spirit. It's extreme discipline. People don't just get to be a collegiate athlete. And, again, I'm an athlete, so everything I do, I equate it to that. I didn't just get my scholarship to LSU and then my scholarship to play soccer at LSU just because, I just did. I had to work for it. I had to perfect my gift. I had to perfect my craft. I had to go out there and practice two, three hours a day on top of going to school to keep my scholarship. I had to make sure that I did what I had to do so that my gift can flourish and keep me there. And I had to do what I had to do to get the scholarship, to be seen, to be put on the radar. It's the same in the spirit realm. You have to do your part. You have to be disciplined. If God wakes you up at 3 a.m., you don't just roll over or pick up your phone and scroll through Instagram and Facebook. You say, Holy Spirit, what do you need? I'm here. I'm your servant. I'm listening. You pray. You seek. You fast. You ask him what does he want. So it's a lifestyle of prayer. It's a lifestyle that a lot of people can't do. The accountability that I hold people to is the accountability that God has held me to, and it's high. And even some of my clients run from me. Some of my friends, they'll mess up or they'll have their moment, and they'll be like, I didn't call you because I didn't want to look in the mirror. It's a lifestyle of repentance and introspect, and it's all led by the Holy Spirit. It's all led by being surrendered. And having a willing, yielding heart to the Holy Spirit. At any given moment, he can just be like, pray. At any given moment, he can be like, I need you to do this. I need you to research that. And most of us will be like, oh, I'll do it later. And you miss the moment. There's something that always resonates with me. I was reading a book by Youngie Chu. I believe is his last name. And he's the biggest church, Christian church in the world. He's out of South Korea. And he said, when God tells you to do something, The power, one, is in the obedience immediately, but the power is because he's telling you to do it because you are anointed to do it right then and there. Not two minutes later, Mm -hmm. not 30 minutes later, not two days later. It's when he tells you to do it. And we're good Mm -hmm. with, oh, I didn't feel led or I heard it, but maybe I'll do it a little later. And I have a lot of clients that I have to deal with on that. I'm like, no, you need to do it when you don't know why. God uses the foolish things to confound the why. You don't know why you're doing it. But there's a reason, and there's something in that moment, not three days later, not two 
days later. Now, you still might like, get the blessing, but you miss what was in that moment wow. and the power that was in that moment. Wow. So when I say extreme obedience, I mean you are dropping everything the minute the Holy Spirit gives you an unction. And do we do it all the time? Absolutely not, because no one's perfect. But it's more than not is the key. So basically, it's just being Holy Spirit-led and having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Wow. A lot of us are guilty. I know I'm for one. You know I'm guilty. You, We've been together for a long time. You know I'm guilty of not doing stuff when God has called me to do something at a certain time. And Lord, please forgive me. <laughs> but I thank you for saying that because... It is in the obedience. The blessing is definitely in the obedience. So the blessing is definitely in the obedience. And I, I thank you for sharing that with us. I wanted to ask you, what was your purpose of getting married? What was your purpose in getting married to the man you got married to? So the purpose actually came out after the marriage. Um, of course, nobody knows the purpose of their marriage. Well, I can't say nobody. Somebody may. Um, somebody may seek God. I knew that my marriage had a purpose, um, but I didn't know what was the purpose until the day I said I do. Maybe a couple of weeks later, the first incident, I always tell this story. Um, my husband would come in. He was a coach at the time, football coach, and lunch was right after um, being on the field. So I was a stay-at-home wife, and he would, I would cook lunch, and he came home. Lunch was ready. So we had a shotgun house. He would walk in and go straight through the bathroom, through the kitchen, and wash his hands and come back out, and he would track dirt and mud and grass because he came straight from the field. So I wipe it up, but then it became a consistent thing, and I wanted to say something, and the spirit was like, no, give it to me. And I was just like, what do you mean give it to you? I can just say something. I'm young. I'm I'm new at this. I'm immature. And I'm like, but I want to say something. Like, I'm not his maid. I'm not just supposed to sit here and clean it up every time he does it. And, of course, I ranted, I, I fussed, but I did it. And, like, maybe three weeks, two weeks, I can't remember the exact time, it's so long ago, but I say max three weeks. I did not say anything, and I gave it to God, gave it to the Holy Spirit, and just said, well, then you fix it. And, lo and behold, one day he walks in, goes straight to the kitchen like he normally does, straight to the washroom, washes his hands, turns around, and says, what is all that on the floor? I said, you. And the Holy Spirit goes, now you can say something. I said, every day at lunchtime, you track dirt in. He goes, oh, my God, he got down and cleaned it up, and it never happened again. And that was the day that the Holy Spirit said, if you give me your marriage, I will use your marriage to save other marriages. Yes, And God. that's when my purpose started. Wow. Wow. That is amazing. So you hear that, guys? When you give God your marriage, when you give him your business, anything, he'll take it. And he'll run with it. And he'll take control of it. And he'll do things that you never even thought of. Am I right, Coach BB? Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. But why is it that we, we don't give God our things? We don't give God our marriages, our relationships? Because, you know, I, for one, have been guilty of not giving him that because I guess of the unknown of what will happen. But I say I trust God. But yet and still, I haven't given him the thing that 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 um, is most dear to me. And that's wrong. Am I not right? That's really wrong. Absolutely. So to answer your first question, <laughs> it's a question that most of my clients ask without asking it. And I tell them all the time, when we say faith, I have faith in God. I, I, I put my faith in God. I prayed about it. And I have the faith. Basically, you are putting, it's a mystical thing. Faith has no substance, and in, in, in I'm not going to, to the definition, I'm going to the definition of faith, not the scripture where it says faith is a substance of things not seen, but things hoped for, not that. When I say it has no substance, it doesn't put the accountability on you. It puts it on God. But when you change, interchange the word faith, because the definition of faith in Hebrew is trust. When you take out faith and say, I have trust in God, I trust that God's going to do this, it puts the accountability on you. The bottom line is most people don't trust God, period, the end. We say we do, but we don't trust them. And how you know we don't trust them is what you just said. You you may be fear or uneasy about the unknown, but if you trust God, why would you be un, or uneasy about the unknown? You know he has it. And it's easier said than done, but it's a trust issue. And then most women 
usually are controlling. We are fixers. We are meddlers. And if it's not working right, we try to go do it. If we ask our spouse to take the trash out and he doesn't do it within a time frame that we think he should, we um, pause it. Okay. So, yeah. So, to sum it all up, basically, we do not, uh, we like to control and fix and, and, like I was saying previously, and we like to put our hands in stuff. Um, I was given the example that when our, we ask our husband to take the trash out, and he doesn't do it within the time frame that we deem is right, then we try to do it. And then we get mad when either he gets complacent or he's like, well, I know she's going to do it because we're conditioning him to do that. It's the same with God. God tells you to do something. I'm going to do this. And we get impatient because God said, I'm going to do it. But he didn't say when. We're not supposed to be concerned about the when. In a marriage, you keep your eyes on God. If you keep your eyes on God, the when doesn't matter. And he gives you the grace to be patient for when he does manifest what he asks you for. But we are never ready for what we ask for. We're never ready. That's why we have to go through things. It's character building. It's it's taking things out so that when we get to the next level, you're not there for just a moment. I just had a podcast where I said that you're not there for a moment, but you're there to stay. Each level requires another level of discipline. Each level requires another level of of love and commitment and allowing God to strip us. And most of us don't. So to answer your question, it's trust. And then control. We don't know how to fully trust God. Wow. That's a lot of us. I know I, for one, have been there. But I'm learning how to trust him. Even now, I'm learning. And learning how to trust God, sometimes it's not easy. The process isn't easy. But you know what? It's a beautiful thing in learning how to trust God because there are times when I'm like, oh, what, what, what is going to happen now? What, what's, what's going on over here? And, you know, when I just realize that I can just give it all to him, it makes things easier. Even though I don't know what's going to happen, it makes my head feel a whole lot better. I'm not, I don't have headaches as much as I used to. My hair isn't coming out like it was before because I'm stressed yeah. out, you know, and my body is not reacting to the stress, you know. Yep. So I thank God that I now know and I'm learning how to give a lot more to him instead of holding on to it. Because in the grand scheme of all things, I can't do anything about it without him. So and that's exactly where I am. I wanted to ask you, um, in your home, how do you keep your home together in the midst of chaos? Basically prayer. Um, prayer and then I do this thing which I'm actually rolling out soon. It's a devotional on the marital fitted room, marriage fitting room, where you literally put on the clothes designed for you. For marriage, it's our citizen wear that we don't put on. There's a couple of scriptures that says, clothe yourself with love, clothe yourself with patience and humility. And um, I find that that helps keep me. And I just started doing that, and I see a huge difference. But um, but before then, it would just be prayer. And one scripture that God gave me uh, years ago, that you put your trust in no man because all men will fail you. Your husband is not perfect. No one is perfect. So whenever there is issue, if you know that God has you and he's confirmed that he has you through multiple, multiple blessings and miracles that he's pulled you out of, then, again, it's a sin because we're worrying and we're anxious. We're truly worrying for nothing and we're anxious for nothing. And in that scripture, if you read the whole thing, it said anxious, you know, be anxious for nothing but through all things and prayer and supplication. God will basically give you the peace that passes all understanding and guard your heart and mind and basically we don't realize that as long as we don't worry or fall in anxiousness god is going to guard our heart and our mind from those two sins but the minute you start worrying the guard is lifted so again it comes back to extreme discipline as long as i go to god and as long as i'm not allowing prayer uh, anxiety and worry to take over I will be guarded that's my part everything with God is conditional 
you have to do your part. It's not just going to poof, be there. God is not just going to give it to you and do it for you. He always expects an even exchange, an even return. You do this, I do that. If you did this, I will do this for you. So to keep the marriage in peace, I also have my marriage blueprint that I um that goes with my book, Pray Why, What, Call, Where, Five um, Daily Techniques to Improve Your Wife Life. Um, they it, It's a plan that I put together for my marriage, and then I realized my husband's like, well, you need to give that to other people because obviously it works. So I coach my clients on certain plans like safe words and safe zones and chat-ins that they have and how many days it should take you to get with God to go through the five steps in my book to make sure that you're okay to then communicate because, again, to keep the peace in your home because your husband desires peace. He does not like a discord. He does not like strife. You have to not approach him with a situation full of accusations, full of uh, anger. You have to be able to control those things. And the book helps you control those things. The book gives you five steps. It outlines clearly five steps that when you're done with those five steps, it, it may take you a day, it may take you two, three days. When I first started, it took me a week, sometimes two weeks. But we've narrowed it down. Ours is three days. And I walk you through as a client on how to narrow it down to where, and it forces you. Because, again, a lot of believers can say, oh, I'm going to go pray about it. And it's a cliche. It's a crutch. And we don't pray about it. And we just let it fester. We let it dig deep, bear roots. And then now we have uh, fruits of that. So this forces you, again, forces the accountability and the responsibility on your shoulders to get with God on the situation and half the time I'm not even going to be on uh, I'm not going to be honest I have been the root of it I have been the cause of it and God's like that's your issue not his you deal with it and I don't even take it to my husband if you ask my husband right now what bothers him to me he'll tell you I'm not sure or he'll say well the last time she came to me because it's you need your voice to be heard You don't want it to be want, 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 want like Charlie Brown. You want your voice to be heard. As in more silence. And when you do speak, he's like, whoa, she's speaking on this. This must be serious. Instead of the other way, like, here we go again. Here goes something else that bothers her. No. The book helps you to make your voice powerful in silence and just as powerful when you use it. Wow. Wow, Coach Phoebe, you've given us some great tools today. And I just want to thank you for giving us some tools. I want to thank you for uh, being a guest. And you all, Coach Phoebe, will um, will be with us some more um, on some other series. We're going to continue this until the Lord says so, <laughs> until he... Um, until we're out of information, but I don't think we'll ever be out of information. It's an ongoing process. It's a learning process when it comes to relationships, especially um, marriage where two parties, two different worlds are coming together to make one. Um, Coach BB, where can um, the listeners find you? Where can they follow you? So um, I have my own app. It's a community to reset your mind and help shift you to own your lost knowledge and your power and potential in God, which is what I just did. This whole talk was shifting you. Um, it is the resetapp.com. I also can be found on Instagram at um, I am Somalia Brown, as well as Facebook at Coach BB Brown. And then I do have my website where you can just kind of scroll and find some things about me at bbbrown.com. So those are a couple of ways that you can find me um, on social media. And definitely, I always recommend the app, especially if you are called to more and you know that there's just something in you that you're living a mundane life day to day and you want something more and extra, then the app is for you. I I highly challenge you to just check it out and see if it doesn't hit your spirit. Because if it hits your spirit, then you're in the right place. Oh, wow. Thank you, Coach BB. Well, guys, there you go. You heard it. Um, You can also follow me on Podbean, where it's um, Healing Love and Relationships with El Janelle. So make sure you become a follower. 
and tune in to listen to us. Um, we'll be coming up with some more podcasts, some more shows with Coach BB. Coach BB, thank you for coming on today, and I look forward to doing many more shows with you. Absolutely, and thank you so much to all your followers. I hope that this has blessed you tremendously because this is definitely been something that's been on both of our hearts to kind of give back to the ladies that, um, and any, any men that may be listening, you know, just to kind of give you insight on marriage and preparation. It's not as hard as you think. It's just one word, trusting God and extreme obedience. Amen. Well, guys, you have a great day. And again, we'll be coming back to you soon. Take care. God bless.